This is actually gonna be hilarious. <laughs> I'm pretty pumped now. Woo! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Welcome to another episode of SURF, a show where we take four surfers, Solly, Vinny, Crookie, and Ozzy, from Byron Bay, a small surf town on Australia's east coast, and give them four surf-based challenges. The overall winner of these four challenges will take home 10,000 magic beans. In our first episode, Space, our surfers were challenged to see who could catch the longest ride. Ozzy Wright won with a 643 metre ride and took the lead with nine points. In our second episode on cover, our servers were challenged to find and compete on the best board that they could buy with a budget of $100 and a case of Byron Bay Premium Lager. Vinny and Solly tie for first place in this competition and after two challenges, the leaderboard looks like this. Aussie is in front with 15 points, Vinny has 14, Solly 13, and Crookie has only six points. This episode, our challenge starting with R is resourcefulness where our servers will attempt to create a fully functional Frankenstein surfboard. After selecting two ends of different snap boards, the next step of this challenge is to marry these two different half boards into one. The catch being that they must achieve this without the use of any traditional surfboard repair materials. No resin, no fiberglass, no Q-cell. The materials that they are allowed to use for this construction will be limited to whatever they can purchase from the local hardware store with a budget of $200. Lastly, the final step will be to test these creations in decent sized pumping conditions in competition against each other. A straight out four man final where whoever serves the best on their Frankenstein will be this challenge's winner. This is an extremely difficult challenge and it's likely that such a feat has never once in the history of the world ever been previously attempted. Because why would anyone do that? I mean, unless they were part of a revolutionary new show that's single-handedly saving surfing from being painfully boring all the time. Radio. The challenge sounds very difficult. I think it'll be pretty hard. I'm tripping, I've no idea what to do. It'd be so funny. <laughs> I have very little confidence in this one. Our competitors' lack of confidence is well earned as they all have almost zero experience making even the most basic surfboard repairs or using tools in general, and their initial ideas are doubtful. Do I know anything about board construction or end repairs? Not, not really at all. I mean, surfboards are like probably my favorite objects in the world almost. The actual building them myself, I prefer to just have someone else build them. All the dust. I tend to just leave it to the pros. What the hell do you use that actually is gonna keep the board together when you put it under pressure surfing? When I first thought about it, I was like, oh yeah, you just screw them together. Like <laughs> Oh, but it's not a good idea. My initial thought is just to like get some rope and just sew it together because I love sewing. <laughs> like a Frankenstein's head joined onto his body kind of thing. It'll be full Frankenstein. How do, like, can you melt this shit? Definitely going to be a pretty interesting one. Yeah, probably 200 bucks worth of duct tape. It's alive, it's alive, it's alive! The first step in our resourcefulness challenge is to make the important decision of choosing which two ends of different snap boards that they'll attempt to assemble together. So what, just pick two of these? Well, there is a lot to think about. A little bit of strategy going into play. Pretty scorched. Okay. Is it, like that's an option. Oh, that's flogged. Fuck, it's kind of crazy. It's gonna be hard, eh? There's nothing wrong with that. Like, tell me that, that, that doesn't look like a pretty sick board. Oh, Al Merrick tra tra tractor combo is pretty cool. I'm going to take the red half of mine and then the back half of this guy. The chances are it's going to look like that when it's actually glued together. <laughs> I think we have a winner. That's the vessel. Yeah, I think I'm going to opt for this combo now. Yeah, I'll take this one. To the tool shed we go. <laughs> Ah, ah, ah. 
Once they selected their two ends, the surfers visited the local hardware store to find their materials and make the final decisions on a construction method that was achievable within the $200 budget. Alrighty. I guess I'll get all the boring stuff first. This might take a while. Oh, clamps are more expensive than you'd imagine, eh? 40 bucks. Probably need some sandpaper. I hate sanding shit. Sandpaper's dear. I've got 200 bucks to spend. 200? Yeah. Do it easy with it. <laughs> the other thing I was kind of thinking is... Rope. Turbo bark. I reckon that's coming with us. Really good tape for um, fixing di quick ding fixes on your board. Weatherproofing tape, what the fuck's that? That'll get me out of trouble. I never even knew about this stuff. I don't know what's going on here. That's not that strong. Oh, it's pretty strong. That's 155, 35. Okay, so I got 45 bucks left. Wait, can I put this back on? Oops. For a permanent bond, spray both surfaces thoroughly. This is actually gonna be hilarious. <laughs> I'm pretty pumped now. And cut them like in like maybe that long sort of thing. I reckon our work is done. bulk of this coming from. I might take some stuff off because we are we are on a budget. $200 budget. Ozzy spent a total of $197.34 with his most interesting material choice being a collection of beware of the dog signs. Yes. I'm pumped. Vinny spent $180.37 with his most expensive material by far being multiple rolls of duct tape. Oh, that's 20 bucks for that. <laughs> Crookie spent $193.91 and then while at the checkout added an extra $6 to his total by purchasing three scorched peanut bars at $2 each to make his grand total $199.91. Look at that, nine cents. <laughs> That's it. Sully spent the least, his title was $145.18 which even included a novelty purchase of a high-vis vest for $9.50. Whew, let's do it. When it came to create their monsters, surprisingly, all the surfers concocted a somewhat similar plan. The first step was preparing the edges. <laughs> Woo! Pretty straight. Everyone opted for straight lines except for Vinny, who engineered a complex layered triangle design. Sacred geometry. If there's a tech award, I should probably win. All right, look at that. It's looking pretty good. Next, they all attempted to develop strength by running cylindrical rods between the two ends, a structural technique known as a dowel. Ozzy, Solly and Crookie opted for various thickness and lengths of Tasmanian oak wooden doweling. Oh, nearly stabbed myself in the heart with a wooden stake. That killed me even though I'm a vampire. Vinny, on the other hand, decided a steel curtain rod would be the stronger option despite it being harder to work with. It's pretty Frankenstein related. Ari, Solly and Vinny then applied various adhesives to their two ends. Oh God. And then it was time for the moment of truth where all their hard work would either pay off or not. The attempted consummation. Time to join the boards. Put this together now. It's, just all, it's all just really gonna just slide in there. Like so. <laughs> No! No! Why? <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! Can you come and sit on? Pretty good. Oh, it's gonna work. Every step's making me a little more confident. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty happy. I think I might just have to run it like that, eh? Just like one from the shops. Doesn't feel as strong as I was hoping, though. It's a bit of a genie boot. <laughs> Once their ends were together, the second last step was to seal the edges. Vinny used silicon until that ran out. No, I'm out of silicon. And then he was forced to rely on the age-old strategy of copious amounts of duct tape. 
Crookie is built as bog. This is a hot batch, boys. And girls, this is a very hot batch. How do I get that in there? Shit. I'm wigging out. <laughs> Looks so dog's breakfasty, but after a quick sand, it'll still look shit. <laughs> it is currently not strong. And then sealed his imperfections in duct tape. Aussie used PVA glue, and when that didn't seem strong enough, he pulled out his Beware of the Dog sign inch to seal the deal. We've just fixed the whole thing with the Beware of the Dog sign. <laughs> it's a gnarly tool. Solly wrapped his in cement tape and then sealed it in polyurethane glue. I don't think this is breaking. With their Frankenstein creations complete, the last step was to assess their work and reassess their confidence. I was just about to give up on it. And then I created this masterpiece. <laughs> Pretty proud of it, eh? The deck looks really weird. And I didn't get it quite centered. <laughs> I'm gonna ride a tube on this board. Feels kind of mental. It's fucking pretty strong. The mummy. <laughs> There's a few hiccups along the way, but all in all, there's a lot of tape. That's it. It's not neat, but I'm pretty sure it's strong. You beauty. And that is how you fix a surfboard. Except that it's not how you fix a board. Not even close. Here to show us the correct way to repair a board is local Byron Frenchman, board repair specialist, Oliver. Hi guys, my name is Olivier. I'm gonna show you how to fix this board. The best way to do it is really to clean your board first. So wax free, wax is your enemy. Sand roughly, but maybe 60 grits. Make sure then, you know, you don't have any loose material. And after that, you just fill it with some q -set if it's big. Once you fill your hole, you just have to patch again. Put a filler coat. And after that, you sand. There you go. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> that thing's oh, golden. God. <laughs> With the conditions expected to be solid on the morning of our competition, none of the surfers had complete faith in their final designs. They all showed up with one of their regular boards as backup in case their new creations didn't hold up. Oh my God, look at that left down the beach. This is the zone over here, huh? What? Hey, it's fucking pumping. The location of our resourcefulness challenge is an out of bank Byron Bay beach break known as. With a decent sized swell running, it's a difficult paddle with the reward of some chunky barrels if you're able to make it to the outside. The perfect conditions to test the durability of these creations. Yeah, tried to put two stringers in. It was all looking real good, and then I just couldn't yeah, get these to match up. Sorry, <laughs> that's tough. This nails. That's not gonna break at all. Yeah, I think. Nah. My board's looking the best. Easily. Nah. Um. Yeah, my board's looking the best. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Like best board you can have out there. It's got, you just get on the front half, paddle power, and these flyers just really, they really just keep you going nice and slow. <laughs> on the first few waves, but it's, it's hanging in there. Definitely hesitant hitting a lip. I haven't even, I kind of had a few waves where I could have probably hit a lip. And I'm like, eventually the right one will come and I'll probably just snap, 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 snap. to come loose. Am I allowed a mid-surf reapplication of tape? Mm. Oh, it's so fun. Fuck, it's really hit out there. I had a shocker. Quite angry and annoyed. <laughs> oh, there's Oz. <laughs> In. Doesn't paddle very well. <laughs> Strong hands. But uh, it's so hard to get out on it. One little cover up at the start, that's about it. One good close out barrel. <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm done. Oh! <laughs> And he's ripping on that board. Oh, oh my god. That was <laughs> sick. <laughs> Tape layer out. <laughs> and the whole bottom bit of tape just like caught water. It was like the um, windsurfer at the pass all over again. <laughs> and then I got a wave and it was the, it was so slippery because that was my wax layer. So I had to like, I was like out there like trying to rub the wax off this tape onto this tape. <laughs> but all in all, I'm I'm over the moon with with this with the performance. I can't believe it held up. It's so sturdy. Look at this. Sully was just whacking it, like, as per usual. Because three of the four boards survived decent sized beach break conditions, we asked another local board repair specialist, Kara Simmons, AKA the Ding Pixie, to assess and stress test each board strength. <laughs> Sully's board, nine out of 10. Good effort. Ozzy cheated because this side's too long. But I like the beware of the dog tags. <laughs> Aussie's board, four out of ten. But points for creativity for creativity. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it got stronger. <laughs> oh my god. It stinks like piss. 
but Jake's board, seven, seven out of ten. Cookies board, zero out of ten. Better luck next time. How did we, how did I not get a single wave out there? <laughs> so funny out there from It here. looks like cooking. <laughs> I think that's snapping the board right there. <laughs> I can't believe I've snapped it. That board looks good. Yeah. <laughs> did you take the tail off what? your favourite board and the nose off your favourite board and just put them together? Yeah, well, it's pretty safe to say who won this one. <laughs> oh, I remember yeah. watching that yeah. and just being like, that was impossible. That was, that was actually that was impossible. Up. Wow. Yeah. I don't even think we need to go to the little scoring room personally. <laughs> good job, Sully. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> Unlike our last challenge uncover, where our surfers placed each other in the resourcefulness challenge was unanimous. That one was a no-brainer. Sully. Um, Sully obviously won by a million miles. Well, it was pretty obvious that Sully won that one. Sol, Sol, Sol. Many kidding. Once again, it was like between Vinny and Ozzy for this one. But yeah, Vinny got a few pretty fun little shoes. Don't tell me I'm last. <laughs> After three challenges, the leaderboard looks like this. Crookie, with three from three last place finishes, is on nine points. Aussie is currently in third place with a much better position on 19 points. Just in front, Vinny and Solly are tied for first place on 22 points. With one challenge to go, Vinny and Solly are both squashed on top of each other in the box seat and will duel it out with Aussie for the ultimate prize. While Crookie is statistically out of contention, his last opportunity for redemption will be this final challenge, which just so happens to be his specialty, frictionless surfing, which means finless if you're not in the know. You just kind of sitting low and just holding on for dear life. Like I said, I'd probably never surf a finless again. A few years ago, I had a tragic finless incident. When you guys went into the shop, did you guys like ask the guy? Did he, did you get overwhelmingly amount of information from him or oh, not? He told me to get some fly screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah Use that as fiberglass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably would have worked. Yeah, and then he was going, and, and toilet paper. Toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like paper mache, yeah. Fuck yeah. Are you kidding? I was completely expecting him to break first or second wave with how much power and how big the waves were. It was six foot plus, like solid beach breaks. I was like actually really surprised that Vinny's went as well as it did because his was just freaking full-blown Frankenstein. <laughs> 